So our first images of the Vivo new fold and flippable lineup has been revealed. And they look absolutely gorgeous. But I'll be honest with you, I like the flip a lot better. You know, I guess really in my mind, after seeing Oppo's flippable phone, how the outside display is so big and massive and so much real estate, it has made me just sit so excited for a possible, you know, Vivo version. Because I knew as time goes on, and this is going to happen with the Galaxy Z Flip 5 too, is this outside display's real estate for every flippable phone moving forward is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, the thing I do like about, you know, the Vivo series is they do use Zeiss lenses, which I think is an absolute W. Guys, do not know what a Zeiss lens is. It's pretty much the best glass you can get on a Sony camera. Uh, it's absolutely amazing glass. Now, of course, Vivo, as always, is, is you know, a sister company of Oppo, but they are strictly in European countries and China. Hopefully, eventually, we see them go international and globally. We saw Oppo have one of their flippable phones go to the FCC recently, trying to go internationally. So hopefully, we get some amazing news that, you know, Vivo is going to go international too. Because I think this could sell so amazing internationally. Both of these phones, not only just the flippable one, also the full one. Now, of course, the full one has been knocked a lot of times as it looked exactly like the Galaxy Z Fold 5. But the thing that was Z Fold 4 at this moment in time, Z Fold 5, yes. Z Fold 4, but the biggest thing is the cameras. Again, like I said before, you know, what we have talked about recently with the specs being released was that the Z Fold 4, to Z Fold 5, the cameras aren't really getting that much of an upgrade. Well, on the Vivo series, that's what they're really focused on. They're focused on not only the price being less than the Galaxy series, but also it's the cameras being as amazing as humanly possible. And what we're seeing at both of these is both of them are continuing to have amazing Zeiss lenses. Now, spec-wise, it's just what we can pretty much expect across the board is and any foldable phone coming out, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, most likely it's going to run Android 13 out of the box. It's going to have probably no wireless charging, no waterproofness, but it's going to have NFC. It's going to have, you know, beautiful uh, 120 hertz inside display, 120 hertz outside display. Um, you know, just a, I, I say almost like the typical at this point, but it really is. It's what we really expect whenever we see a foldable phone come out that, you know, they have those common things. We will see occasionally a foldable phone come out where one of the displays is 90 hertz. But for the most part, I think as a global standard at this point, we've all come to the reality that, okay, we're going to get 120 hertz across the board. Either outside or inside display is going to be 120 hertz, or both of them will be 120 hertz. And we're going to get a Google Glass Victus outside display, and the inside display is going to be hopefully very durable enough and not have problems. And what we saw from the first Vivo Fold series was that the inside display very much like Oppo, has little to no crease to it, which is an absolute W by, you know, Vivo. And again, something that we are waiting to see Samsung really master is the inside display being, having zero, you know, problems with it, having zero crease to it. Now, Gal the Galaxy Z Fold 5 is rumored to have a hinge, Kind of like Oppo, where they should have a lot less of a crease. But based on what I understand the speculation is, there's going to still be a crease. There's still going to be a good, you know, actual crease on it. Which, again, is just like, I'm waiting for Samsung to really master that too, right? They have mastered the whole idea of waterproofing this phone. You gotta get rid of the crease, man. You gotta get rid of that crease. Get rid of it. And then you can kind of move forward from there. But again, that outside display on the flip is so freaking gorgeous. Ah, uh, I, I can't wait. I'm, I'm probably going to be picking up the flippable one of this phone, Vivo-wise. Because I think it's going to be absolutely freaking amazing. I cannot wait for this to come out. And as it says right here, so it's going to be a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor. 120 watts charging, ultrasonic fingerprint sensor. There's also a 2K resolution likely for the inner display. 
Um, so absolutely freaking. And then the flip gets a Gen 1. So, and it does get a 4,400 milliamp battery, which is not bad. Definitely not bad, especially with these flippable phones. We a lot of times see really crappy batteries. That's actually not horrendous for what we could see out of a, I want to say a Chinese phone, but like a, you know, obviously not a main competitor in the market space at this moment in time. But guys, definitely tell me down below your thoughts and opinions. I'm going to guess that nobody watching this video is going to be picking up an op, oh, sorry, a Vivo phone of any kind. So I'm not going to say... If you're going to pick it up, tell me down below, but if this does go international, right? Let's say all these companies go international. Vivo, Oppo, um, Huawei, Google. Again, as most of you don't know if Google is going international. Or, obviously, the companies are international, Samsung or Microsoft. Which company would you personally buy a phone from? If, if all these were options on the table, right, and they were all similar price tags... Obviously, that's the thing. No similar price tags. I would probably... I would want to give Oppo a chance. But I feel like Vivo would interest me a lot with those Zeiss lenses. It really, really would interest me. But that's my personal opinion. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.